The Xyrathians were an apex species, feared and revered across the universe. For centuries they had reigned supreme, their empire expanding through sheer force. Physically imposing and bred for war, the Xyrathians viewed themselves as the ultimate rulers of the galaxy. Any species that dared challenge them had been swiftly and brutally defeated. Now the galaxy was quiet, too quiet. There was no one left to conquer, no worthy foes to test their might. The Xyrathian emperor, a towering figure of muscle and steel, stood in his war chamber, frustrated. We have no more challenges, he growled to his council. Our empire thrives on conquest but we are stagnating. We need a real opponent. Thus, a challenge was sent to every corner of the galaxy. The message was simple. The Xyrathians seek a worthy enemy. Those who believe they can stand against us step forward. Otherwise, prepare to be subjugated. The challenge reached Earth, where humanity, still relatively new to the galactic stage, received it with mixed emotions. The United Earth Coalition met in a special session to discuss the Xyrathian threat. The Xyrathians were not just stronger, they were bigger, faster, and far more experienced in war than any other species humanity had encountered. But while the Xyrathians were formidable, humans had one thing in their favor. History. President Elena Marquez of Earth stood before the assembled leaders, her voice calm but firm. We know the Xyrathians are powerful. They've crushed civilizations far older than ours. But they misunderstand us. They think we're weak because we're new to the galactic stage. They don't know what it took for us to get here. Let's give them a lesson in humanity. The decision was made. Earth would accept the challenge not with bluster or threats, but with a simple message. Meet with us. Learn what it means to be human. The Xyrathians, intrigued but disdainful, sent an envoy to Earth. When the towering Xyrathian warrior arrived on the surface, he stood at least eight feet tall, his armor gleaming under the sun. A crowd gathered to watch the meeting between humanity and the strongest species in the universe. The Xyrathian envoy sneered at the humans. Your species is small. Fragile. You dare accept our challenge? Do you seek annihilation? President Marquez, flanked by Earth's military leaders, remained unshaken. We don't seek war but we will not shy away from it. We accepted your challenge to show you something no species has ever shown you before. The Xyrathian scoffed, his patience waning. You think words will save you? No, Marquez said, a small smile on her lips. Not words. History. As the crowd and the Xyrathian envoy watched, Earth's delegation began their presentation. Holograms filled the sky, showing images of human history, Ancient battles, wars fought for survival and civilizations that rose and fell. Humanity, fragile compared to the Xyrathians, had endured centuries of conflict and hardship. The lesson had begun. The Xyrathian envoy stood unimpressed as the holographic images of Earth's ancient past filled the sky. Primitive humans wielding spears and stone tools, battling against the elements and each other. He crossed his arms, his massive frame casting a shadow over the assembled crowd. This is your history, he scoffed. A collection of weak, squabbling tribes fighting for scraps of land? President Marquez remained calm. It's not the tools we use that matter, it's the lessons we learned. Watch closely. The holograms shifted, revealing the rise of the Roman Empire. The projection showed vast armies marching in perfect formation, their disciplined ranks overwhelming enemies. Roads stretched across continents, connecting distant cities, while aqueducts carried fresh water to millions. For centuries Rome was the mightiest empire on earth. But the images soon changed. The once great empire began to fracture. Civil wars erupted, barbarian invasions chipped away at its borders, and political corruption rotted it from within. Eventually, the mighty Roman Empire collapsed under its own weight, leaving behind ruins and lessons. Rome was the strongest empire of its time, Marquez explained. But strength alone didn't save it. When unity faltered and arrogance took over, it fell. The Xyrathian envoy shrugged. Empires rise and fall. Ours has endured for millennia because we are stronger, wiser than your Romans. Perhaps, Marquez said, unflinching. But you've never faced anything like the next empire. The hologram shifted again, this time to the vast Mongol horde sweeping across Asia and Europe. Led by Genghis Khan, the Mongols were ruthless, swift, and unstoppable. Their cavalry tore through armies much larger than theirs, conquering vast territories in a matter of years. The Xyrathian's eyes flickered with interest. He couldn't deny the effectiveness of such raw, aggressive power. But again the images changed. The mighty Mongol Empire, despite its initial success, fragmented and crumbled under internal strife, cultural clashes, and the impossibility of managing such vast lands. The Mongols conquered half the known world through sheer force, 
Marquez said. But they couldn't sustain it. Their power was spread too thin, their strategies too dependent on violence. In the end they lost control. The Zyrathian envoy narrowed his eyes. Are you suggesting our empire will collapse as theirs did? I'm suggesting that no empire is invincible, Marquez replied. Power without wisdom is a brittle thing. Empires that rely on violence and dominance eventually fall. It's only a matter of time. The Zyrathian snorted. You compare us to these primitive conquerors but we are nothing like them. Our empire is united, our warriors bred for war. You still haven't shown me why humans are any different. Marquez nodded, undeterred. Patience. There's more to learn. As the lesson continued, the Zyrathian envoy began to shift uneasily. The human history he had dismissed as primitive was starting to reveal something unexpected. A pattern of persistence. Each time humanity fell it rose again stronger, wiser and more determined. The envoy still believed in Zyrathian superiority, but a seed of doubt had been planted. He wasn't ready to admit it yet, but the lesson was far from over. The Zyrathian envoy stood, arms crossed as the holograms continued to shift through time. The images of empires long gone gave way to the modern era of humanity, an era defined by global wars that reshaped the world. As scenes of trench warfare from World War I filled the sky, the tone of the lesson darkened. Soldiers knee-deep in mud, gas masks strapped to their faces, endured relentless bombardments and poison gas attacks. The cost of war was laid bare. This is what humanity faced in the 20th century, President Marquez explained. A war that spanned continents, leaving millions dead. But we didn't fall. We endured. The Zyrathian envoy's sneer softened as he watched. The scale of devastation was unlike anything he had imagined for such a small, fragile species. But he still didn't understand the point. And what did you gain from it? He asked, his voice gruff. Endless death and destruction? Marquez looked him square in the eye. We gained a lesson. We learned that war, unchecked, leads only to ruin. Yet, even as we were pushed to the brink of collapse, we adapted, evolving not just our weapons, but our understanding of survival. The images shifted to World War II. Explosions, firebombings, and mushroom clouds dominated the sky as the audience saw the horror of total war. Humanity had once again faced near annihilation, nations burning, cities reduced to rubble. But they had emerged from the ashes, rebuilding their world stronger than before. The Zyrathian envoy's expression faltered as the images of Hiroshima and Nagasaki came into focus. The destruction wrought by atomic weapons was something even he hadn't seen in his own war-torn universe. The death toll was staggering, but what caught his attention most was humanity's response afterward. We developed the most destructive weapons known to our planet, Marquez said, but we didn't use them to conquer. After seeing the horror of nuclear war we chose restraint. We realized that survival depended not on constant warfare, but on knowing when not to fight. The holograms now showed humanity's rebuilding efforts. Cities rising from rubble, international cooperation forming in the aftermath of war, and the birth of the United Nations. Soldiers who had once been enemies now stood side by side in peace. The message was clear. Humanity had learned from its darkest moments. What is the point of this? The Zyrathian asked, his voice quieter now. You suffered but what is that proof? You still lack the strength to defeat us. Marquez smiled but it was a grim, knowing smile. It proves that we understand something you don't. War alone doesn't define us. We've faced destruction and instead of crumbling we've adapted. We rebuilt, learned and grew stronger each time. It's not about brute force, it's about knowing when to fight and when to rise beyond it. The envoy's eyes narrowed, the arrogance in his stance softening. For the first time he seemed unsure. This species, which he had thought weak, had endured trials that shook even his warrior's heart. He couldn't help but wonder, could humanity's strength lie in their ability to survive what would break others? The history lesson wasn't over but now the Zyrathian was listening. The air was heavy with tension as the final images flickered into view. The Zyrathian envoy watched closely now, his arrogance tempered by curiosity, though he still couldn't understand where all of this was leading. He had expected bluster or defiance, not this steady, calculated history lesson. And yet he couldn't dismiss what he had seen. The hologram shifted to the Cold War era. Missiles on launch pads, presidents and premiers engaged in tense negotiations, the world on the brink of annihilation. The images were stark but there was something different this time, no massive battles, no oceans of soldiers charging into conflict. Instead, a delicate balance between two superpowers, each armed with weapons capable of destroying the planet many times over. This is what we call mutual assured destruction, Marquez explained. 
The moment we realized that war, on this scale, would mean the end of us all, we had to change. Diplomacy, restraint, and understanding became the most powerful tools in our arsenal. Not strength. Not violence. But the wisdom to step back from the brink. The Zyrathian envoy frowned. You chose not to fight? That's weakness. You lacked the will to conquer. Marques shook her head. No, we chose survival. Sometimes true strength comes from knowing when not to act. We realized that the greatest war we could wage was against our own destructive nature. The projection showed humanity's achievements during this era. The space race, breakthroughs in medicine and global cooperation. Amidst the tension of potential destruction humanity didn't stagnate. They pushed forward, developing technologies that allowed them to reach the stars. This, Marquez emphasized, was humanity's greatest strength. The ability to evolve beyond conflict, to learn from their darkest moments and build a future. While we stood at the edge of destruction, we chose to innovate, to push the boundaries of science and exploration rather than fall into endless war, Marquez continued. It's not that we're unwilling to fight when necessary. We have that capacity. But we've learned that brute force isn't the only way to win. The Zyrathian envoy remained silent, his gaze locked on the holograms. His thoughts swirled. Zyrathian society was built on conquest, on proving their worth through war. But this, this was something else entirely. The humans weren't claiming to be stronger physically, they were claiming something far more dangerous. Adaptability, foresight, and a determination to survive against impossible odds. The final image appeared. Earth, a small blue dot in the vastness of space. The projection zoomed out to reveal Earth's fleets, technologically advanced, prepared for any threat. But there was no sign of aggression, only a message of readiness. We accepted your challenge, Marquez said quietly, but not because we want war. We wanted to show you that humanity is not what you expected. We've faced annihilation before and we're still here. You can't defeat us because we've already learned how to defeat ourselves. The Zyrathian envoy clenched his fists. For the first time in his life he wasn't sure what to say. His species, so confident in their strength, had never encountered an enemy who fought with wisdom instead of weapons. Without another word, the Zyrathian turned and left, shaken. The humans had given them their answer, one far more powerful than war.